those of you that have gathered together here within this sanctuary, to those of you that are gathered around this community and beyond who are online and coming into this service to witness to the resurrection of Christ, to remember Jerry Rushton, including Jerry's son, Jay, who is unable to be with us this morning because of illness, we ask and are thankful to welcome you to this service. The special candle that is here on the table this morning has significance. Last Sunday, this worshiping community celebrated All Saints Sunday, and Jerry's passing was Sunday early morning. But before the service, we were made aware and we made one more candle available to celebrate, to celebrate life and life everlasting. And that is the candle that then is still lit today for this service. And so as we come into this time of worship, of thanksgiving and remembrance, I invite you to stand as you are able and join in our call to worship and opening prayer. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord. Today I have He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Please join me now in prayer. O God, who gave us birth, you are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. So show us now your grace that as we face the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Eternal God, we bless you for the great company of all of those who have kept the faith, finished their race, and who now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you, especially Jerry, whom you have now received into your presence. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and of death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die, and when our days here are ended, enable us to die as those who go forth to live, so that living or dying our life may be in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
I want to thank Nanette, you and your family, and Dr. Hoffman for the invitation to be a part of this celebration of the resurrection of Jerry. We gather here in this sanctuary because someone who was much beloved, respected, and admired has passed from this life. Blessed and a blessing was Jerry Rushton. Jerry was precious, crafted by God, made in God's image. And today our hearts are full of thanksgiving for a life well lived for 86 years. A graduate of Earlham College in Ball State, husband to Nanette, brother to father to Jerry and Jay, grandfather to Grace and Will and Sam, coach and mentor to hundreds over the years, and also many students who he taught. Jerry has certainly left behind a plate that cannot be filled. But today in our loss and grief, Jerry would not want us to grieve without hope. The ground of our hope is the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and the promise of eternal life. We celebrate Jerry's life today as we reflect on his Christian journey. The book of Hebrews speaks of some of the great heroes of the faith, everyday people of the Old Testament, men and women who have died, Abel and Moses, Rahab, and so on. The author names all these people. And then he says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the very right hand of the throne of God. This scripture imagines life as a race, a great athletic feat in which we are cheered by those who have gone before us. Life, like a race, is sometimes exhilarating, sometimes exhausting. But life ends in triumph and glory, for we celebrate Jerry's race today. In 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 25, we are reminded that we race to win the prize, which does not fade away, the prize of eternal life. And so St. Paul writes, run with purpose every step. His whole life long, Jerry Rushton was a runner. He was a coach to athletes who ran races. And Jerry ran with discipline, dedication, and purpose. His teams were champions. I thought of that passage today from 1 Corinthians, Nanette, because a few years ago, you and Jerry, several members of our congregation, we were in Corinth. We were in Corinth as we explored Paul's journeys in Greece and Asia Minor. It was in Corinth that the Corinthians said to St. Paul, we don't understand this resurrection and St. Paul said to them, there is this natural body and there is a spiritual body. And today we know that Jerry is part of that great cloud of witnesses. He is in that spiritual body that surround us even now, who pray for us, who worship with us, who encourage us, albeit 
from another place. Greece, as we discovered, is where the marathon began. A marathon is long, it's not a sprint. And Jerry was blessed with a long and productive life. He was blessed to be a blessing to many in this lifetime. And when I reflect on Jerry's life, a theme comes back to me over and over and over again as I observed him as his pastor for 28 years. And that theme is faithfulness. His long life was a life of faithfulness. His attention to scripture, his faithfulness in worship, and also as I observed his works. Jerry was a part of several mission trips we took over the years, to Mexico, to the Yucatan, and also to Honduras. I remember on our trip to Honduras, we went right after Hurricane Mitch, which had devastated the country, the worst hurricane in 200 years. And we went to this little village called El Nuevo Porvenir, the new future. The village had been washed down the mountainside and they were starting anew. And Jerry was helping these poor, poor people build homes. They were living in little hovels with just plastic covering them. Jerry's faith and his involvement in community and sharing the faith with others was also a part of his commitment. I'm grateful for the last several weeks of being with Jerry at Westminster Village where I serve as chaplain. I would go in to see him every morning and we would pray together. We'd talk about the Ball State Cardinals, of course. And we would also reflect on the fact that Jerry sensed that the end was close and he was confident of his salvation. Jerry told me many years ago, I was saved on a hillside called Golgotha many years ago when Jesus Christ gave his life for me. The emphasis was on what God had done for him. As we close with prayer every morning, I realized Jerry was getting weaker and weaker physically. But as I took his hand, his grip was firm, and I realized he was still strong physically, still strong spiritually. A marathon of faithfulness. That's how I'll always remember my good friend Jerry, who now doubt, dwells with the saints of God and is part of that great cloud of witnesses. To Nanette, to you and your family, the words of Jesus, I hope, give peace and comfort this day. Jesus said, in this world, we have tribulation. But he said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. times of grief and sadness, it is our faith that calls us to words of both comfort and hope. Jerry's grandchildren, Grace, William, and Samuel are here, and, and each will be sharing words of, in, of hope and faith that come from the scriptures. Please come as you are able and share with us our three scripture readings. Our first reading is from John 14, 1 through 7. Do not let your hearts be troubled. 
Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. The second reading is from 2 Timothy 4, 7 through 8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Our final reading is from Isaiah 40, verse 31. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. appreciate the words that have already been shared by Dr. Naylor as well as then the grandchildren of helping us and directing us to, to the scriptures. I'm thankful for the years of leadership and experience that, that Ron brings with the family and his service here within the community, things that I only have begun, and yet I feel a, a special connection to Jerry. He and I share in common a background in running and that sense of what it feels like to, to run not only a race, but to run then in life with that as part of your background. Jerry was born on June 29th, 1935 to parents William Lloyd and Blanche Isabel Rushton. Jerry grew up in the Mars Hill neighborhood of Indianapolis, and he graduated from Ben Davis High School. His dad worked as a buyer to the Indianapolis stockyard, and his, his mother was a, a wonderful seamstress and worked for a time at the Indianapolis Glove Factory. Jerry had a, a twin sister, Geraldine, as well as four other sisters and another brother. For those counting, Jerry was one of seven children then. As a good Hoosier boy, Jerry grew up dreaming about playing basketball. But by high school, he realized that he was not going to be able to be competitive. He just wasn't tall enough. So he switched. He switched sports and he found himself out on the track running those loops. By the time he graduated, Jerry was recruited to run in college and he headed to Earlham College in Richmond, Indiana. And Jerry loved his college days at Earlham. Earlham. He ran track and cross country for the Quakers. He also worked for the school serving in the cafeteria and working in the summer at the school bus factory. In those days, a good summer job and maybe a little side job during the school year was enough to cover tuition. That is unheard of today. It was in Jerry's senior year that he met a young woman who was working in the president's office of the college. Jerry asked Nanette out and they, they had their first date going to a basketball game. 
in Manchester. It was on June 29, 1958, that Jerry and Annette were married in the meeting house at Earlham College. Annette figured that if they got married on Jerry's birthday, then he would never forget their anniversary. But after 63 years of marriage, there were a few years where both of those significant dates snuck up on them. But after graduation, Jerry began a career of teaching and coaching. This included working at Decatur Central High School in Gratis and Treble County in Ohio and Abington School before he was hired, called back, if you will, as the head track and cross country coach and faculty member in the physical education program at his alma mater back in Richmond. After nine great years at Earlham, Jerry was hired to coach and to teach here at Ball State University, where he worked for 48 years. A wonderful testament to a life and career and a calling to this community and this college. Jerry achieved a number of wonderful accomplishments over the 60 years of teaching and coaching, but some of the most important are the relationships that he made, relationships with athletes and students in all of those years. For years, Jerry and Annette would invite the teams to come over to the house together, and according to at least what one person shared, many of the runners still remember a special ham and cheese sandwich that was offered to the team. Many of the runners still make those sandwiches for their own family members and friends. But more than maybe the sandwiches were the memories, the lasting memories of how he mentored, he coached, he taught, he cared for each one of them. Not necessarily just about their time, but about their progress, about their life. Beyond his accolades and accolades in teaching and coaching, Jerry was proud of his family. Nanette and Jerry welcomed their son Jerry in 1966, and three years later, they welcomed home Jay. They're great stories, stories that connect to different parts, but one in particular of Jerry's sabbatical time when he and the family were off in Europe. The kids were maybe third and sixth grade. There were stories of the family going out in Finland and picking up the, Lindenberry, the lingonberries uh, and selling them there along the streets, or the time when they were in Germany and suddenly this man who had talked about and thought about and taught speed all of his life, got on the Autobahn, and his only words were, oh my. There's stories around the trip to Disney and about the time with the grandchildren, all a reminder of how important a family was for Jerry. Jerry. In 1969, when Jerry and Annette moved here to Muncie, when he began his career at Ball State, they also joined this congregation. In his 53 years of membership, of dedicated, of faithful membership here at First Presbyterian Church, we remember that he served as an elder. We remember that he served in ministries both within the grounds and the community, but also wider, as Dr. Naylor shared, in the mission trips that were taken. As a fellow runner, distance, cross-country, a few half marathons myself, I, I always remember how thankful I was that somebody planned out the path. Because out there in the in the running, if you didn't know where you were going, if something didn't give you direction, it would be easy to lose track of where you were going. You never wanted to add an extra mile onto the race. I'm mindful that Jerry understood that his faith connected him to Jesus as the way, as the way forward that Jesus was a marker along the path. And, and like Jerry, I'm sure, and like all of us, there must have been moments where that 
that felt like he was off path for a moment, but Jesus is not just the way, but he's the truth in life that brings us back to that path that brought Jerry back. And so if Jesus prepares then a place for Jerry in the kingdom, as he promised his disciples and those that would come after, if Jesus prepares a place for him, then we are thankful that that's a promise then for us as well. That surely he will come, Jesus, and bring us to him. It is in Jesus' promise that we find a faith that, that all of our loved ones who have already departed in this life will be reunited in the life that is still to come. And so we look forward to that reunion that Jerry has already begun with those, those family members, those parents and siblings who have gone before him. Jerry enjoyed going online at times and posting a few different things on his Facebook page. I was scrolling through a few of them this last week and saw not only a number of pieces of nature and the beauty of God's creation that was around, but he, he would sometimes connect to some of the runners in, in this time. He was inspired by their efforts as well. One of the things he posted was from Cindy Holland, who is a record holder in the women's 400 meter hurdles, running it under 52 seconds. And in that post, she says, records come and go. The glory of God is eternal. And I'm no longer run, I no longer run for self-recognition, but to reflect his perfect will that is already set in stone. I don't deserve anything, but by grace through faith, Jesus has given me everything. I think he saw that in her and was thankful to see that faith that then reflected his own understanding of faith. That he ran his race, he walked his life knowing that he did so not for recognition of himself, but by the grace and the faith of Christ who lived and worked in him. And so we come to then the words that were shared from Isaiah 40. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not, and not fail. Jerry understood that, that it was what it was to live and walk in endurance. A story that was offered last night to me as we were waiting in the line, a story that was offered of a, of a time where Jerry was going to get the, his blood drawn, to give blood to the Red Cross. And so he was going through the, all the things that happen when you give blood, and the nurse just had finished taking his blood pressure and... She sounded quite worried. Are you okay, sir? Do you need to sit down? Should we call a doctor? And Jerry, I, I, I feel fine. What's wrong? What, what, what are you seeing? Well, your, your blood pressure is at 50. Oh, don't worry about that. That's what it always is at. His endurance was consistent and his heart was steady. Jerry lived his life, overcoming the challenges that every life brings. And countless times, Jerry was lifted above the challenges and soared on the wings of eagles. And even in the end, in the last weeks, in the last days, when his physical endurance, when his heart slowed, still his spirit endured. And so we believe and we have faith. We have strong faith and trust that God has once more lifted Jerry upon the wings of resurrection. And we give thanks for the promise of his eternal life and the reunion, the reunion in the time when we are called home as well. Thanks be to God for a life well lived and for a faith, a faith that endures in each of us now to carry forth. Amen.
As I mentioned, Jerry's family was very important to him. And of course, no one but family can really share the deepest and the, the strongest of the stories in the life. And so Jerry's son would like to share some of his thoughts about his father. Jerry, welcome, please. Thank you for all, all for coming and being here. It means a lot to our family. We really appreciate it. And those that are online that couldn't be with us, including my brother. This is not a sad occasion, but as you've heard, it's a celebration of a life very well lived and mercy from God for comfort and peace after some hard final years. My dad clearly impacted so many as a father, papa, coach, husband, teacher, cousin, runner, cycling partner, breakfast buddy, uncle, church member, and friend. Thanks to the many who have written him, shared on social media as we heard, and came in person today and on the live stream. I know that many of you wanted to be here who are separated by distance, and we've heard from around the country, really, that I appreciate so much. Personally, I was privileged to have him as a dad. He showed me fishing, hunting, once, and that was enough, <laughs> um, out on Wilman's farm. Thank you to the Wilmans for hosting. Uh, camping, archery, canoeing, yard work, and hard work in the yard, running, of course, orienteering, travel, and a general love of all sports, and yelling at players to try harder, and yelling at the officials, and even the TV, which I think I passed on to the kids as well, too, and anybody that sits at me next to a Pacers game or whatever we go to looks at me like, I, I don't know, I come by it naturally, I think, in that way. It was kind of that coach voice still comes out. He loved meeting people, making connections, and was so proud of his family, as you've heard. He was also proud of the students, athletes, this church, and this community as well. He was very accomplished in his own career, as we're hearing. Yet so many times this week, I've heard stories from people who had either forgotten through the decades, or some who never really knew until they heard some of these words or read his obituary this week, all that he had accomplished as a teacher, coach, and more in his 86 years. It was a testament to his humility and interest in building up others more than himself, especially his students, athletes, and family. Many of us together here today feel like we know each other. We've heard stories about each other through my dad. Um, and he just had such pride in others and would take the time to get to know people and just connect so many in that way. In addition to these personal reflections, there's three key themes in his life some of which you've heard about that I just wanted to echo and put a fine point on today to share. First and foremost, he was a Christian man. He believed in God and helping others through God. I'm grateful to have been raised in this church with his faith, and First Presbyterian has been such an important home to us and the community that meant so much to my mom and dad and our family. Dad loved this church dearly and the service work, as you heard about, from Honduras to tutoring after school, in Muncie as well, and millions of other things uh, that probably went sometimes unnoticed or unshared as part of the outreach ministry. In addition to having lifelong connections with so many of you in Muncie in the community, I appreciate today that we've shared some of his favorite Bible verses and hymns as well too that were really important to him. No doubt he heard from his mother, my grandmother, who was humming those in their Mars Hill home very often around the house. The second area is running, you've heard a lot, which of course is really not just about athletics or, or wearing too short of short shorts in some of the photos, you notice that, um, or competition or times itself. Although I would say now that I'm in this uh, 50 to 55 age bracket, um, his 1987 mini marathon first place finish for his age group in an hour 28 minutes is pretty darn impressive. Um, he had success obviously before that, but I went out today in honor, ran one mile. That's about all I could muster. I thought 740 was pretty good and then looked up and it's still a minute shy of that pace and it was one mile, not 13.1. So um, he did some pretty impressive things um, in Ben Davis that you heard about and Earlham as well. More importantly though, not just the times, running was his medicine, his therapy, 
his prevention. I know the Russian side of the family, some of those in the photos here, um, did not always have the easiest life. They suffered from stress and other health issues. Um, and he lost sisters too young. And I think he saw that. And part of his long, amazing life is due to that fitness and dedication to running in a way. Running gave him an active life. It opened up doors to attend college, to coach, and created friendships all over the world. We heard from Finland where he knew a coach and, and that kind of made that connection. And, and so many countless people that he coached alongside and many last night trainers and, and, and everyone that he um, worked with through running. Um, as, as was shared, Ron said, running's commitment, perseverance, teamwork, and he embodied all of these things. Whether you run or not, I hope we all take away that inspiration in our lives and remembrance. And for those that do run, it's fitting to have Thanksgiving upcoming in a couple weeks. Um, Dad used to have an unusual approach to the Thanksgiving feast. We had uh, my mom's side of relatives in Greenville, Ohio, not too far across the border. On the way to family dinner, he would be in his running clothes, stop the car, 10, 15 miles, I don't know how long, probably the story grows over the years, but several miles outside of town on a rural highway would have us drop him off. We'd go off, you know, meet the relatives, and he'd come running in later, shower, and then consume thousands of calories, all in good conscience as well, too. So never slowed us down from consuming that many, too. But um, I think all of the relatives were like, who is this guy? Why is he running miles? He was the original turkey trots before it was kind of a, a, a thing. So as you maybe have your own turkey trot or just pausing in memory of prayer before Thanksgiving, um, again, fitting on all, sounds, all Saints Day, we will remember him always for those things and running. And the third and final area is teaching. He did it all as we heard from teaching in a single room, multi-class uh, school in the Decatur Central area in the 1950s, even driving the school bus, had all kinds of funny stories about everything inside, outside of the classroom. And of course, teaching hundreds of students at Earlham and Ball State. Coaching, I didn't mention, because it's actually a form of teaching other life lessons. He was a great coach. But I think teaching was the theme of all those things. And it was nice to hear President Worthen last night talk about the bar he set in the classroom. So I think it was really teaching at the core. Um, coaching was maybe the Trojan horse into teaching. There are many wonderful letters, and maybe we'll hear from some of those folks and, and appreciate that um, in chats, sentiments, and other things too. But just one example of many, Dr. Peter uh, Royman, who he coached at Earlham years ago, decades ago. He sent this letter, which was such a blessing for my dad to be able to read these reflections, said, you so patiently kept at me and coached me along. Without track and cross country in your role, I would have accomplished only half of what I've done with my life. Somehow exercise and forcing myself beyond my perceived capabilities has created a life worth living. He was so proud of all he taught in the classroom, on the track, and in so many other ways. I know it's part of the reasons I've been involved in teaching as a pediatrician at IU School of Medicine and Riley Hospital with young developing physicians. They keep me young. Hopefully I can impart some things along the way, and I've definitely picked that up from him. He treasured teaching, coaching, and getting inspired as well by the amazing student athletes and his coaching colleagues as well through the years. Our family sincerely appreciates the many ongoing friendships that they've had over the years, over 50 years for some, and many that continued up to the week that he passed on. In closing, this is not a sad time, but a celebration of his final finish line on earth and the start of his eternal life. He's passing the baton to each of us to keep running the relay race that he started. He will be greatly missed, but living on in all of us. God bless, amen. Thank you again as you share such important parts of the story of Jerry. As mentioned, um, the, the experience that Jerry and Annette began was at Earlham College, which is a, a Quaker connection. And it was there at the college that they experienced the Quaker practice of speaking into the silence, a time often in a Quaker service where there is no agenda, no, nothing planned, but simply if the Spirit moves, then one might speak. So in this time 
as we have a bit of silence, which for some of us that aren't from that Quaker tradition might feel uncomfortable for a moment or two, I invite you to be in the uncomfortable, but if you have a movement of spirit that calls you to say a word or two, you are still invited then to speak into the silence. You can do so from where you are. I know that at home that means you're going to have a hard time hearing and seeing, but bear with us. But if you are able and would like to share in this moment, do know that you are welcome to stand where you're at and share, share in the silence. I know sometimes the story will come in an hour or in 10 minutes. If the story comes in the next little bit while you're still here, I hope that you'll share it with someone down at the end of our service in the fellowship hall, or maybe share it online or in another place, share another story about Jerry, a story that reminds you about his faith and dedication to so many. As Dr. Wallace comes up again to lead us in music for On Eagle's Wings, it is a special invitation. He will sing the, uh, the verses, but we are invited as a congregation to sing the refrain together. The words are in our bulletin, but also will be on the slide.
invite you now to join me once more in the spirit of prayer. O God of grace, you have given us new and living hope in Jesus Christ. We thank you that by dying, Christ destroyed the power of death, and by rising from the grave, opened the way to eternal life. Help us to know that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, shall be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Especially we give thanks for your, you, we give you thanks for your servant Jerry, whose baptism is now complete in death. We praise you for the gift of his life and for all in him that was good and kind and faithful, for the grace that you gave him that kindled in him the love of your dear name and enabled him to serve you faithfully. We thank you that for his, his past and pain ended and that he has now entered the joy you have prepared through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn was the music was the music that was being played by the hospice nurse on Sunday morning at the time of Jerry's passing. It is a reminder of what Jerry knew all too well, that death proved Jesus was fully human, but his resurrection proved that he was fully God. I invite you to stand as you are able and join in the two verses of Old Rugged Cross. the creator and the maker of all and we are mortal formed of the earth and to earth shall we return this you ordained when you created us saying you are dust and to dust you shall return now all of us go down to the dust yet even at the grave we make our song alleluia 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 so give rest O christ to your servant with all of your saints where there is neither pain nor sorrow nor sign but life everlasting now into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Jerry. 
Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him in the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Friends, as a reminder that you are invited at the end of our service for a time of refreshment at the, in our fellowship hall, which is just down the stairs below us. The family is happy to greet you and meet you in that space. But I invite you first to receive our blessing, and then you may be seated at the end of the blessing and uh, as the family departs to be gathered then together downstairs. So let us go with the blessings of God the Father, God the Son, and Holy Spirit. May God's blessings rest and remain upon you and rest on those that you love and on those that nobody loves, now and forevermore, world without end. Amen. Thank you.